Okay, great. Okay. And I'll call the cattle select board meeting to order as well. Okay. And we're calling the meeting to order at 6 05. Um, so we have additions to the agenda, I think, Bruce. Yes. Zoning Just application. For the yep. Domain Society. Society. Okay. All right. Uh, and then we're going to move to the minutes. Oh, no, we don't have minutes here. The you first do this. Oh, oh later. Yeah. Okay. Got it. So let's um, move to our special joint meeting with the Cal Select Board to discuss East Montpelier Fire Department FY 2023 budget requests and fire engine purchase options. Um, so what does the Cal Select Board think of the budget? Let's just start with that. We have agreed to put into our warning the budget amounts requested by the fire department. Okay. Yep. What so about you? Gonna, so Denise, are you you're gonna vote vote at town meeting on the budget? Correct. Okay. And we and we learned today that S172 passed. It's on yep. the governor's desk and he's expected to sign it like tomorrow or something, so that all of our articles will be by Australian ballot as they were last year. Yep. Or because of the pandemic stuff. So everything will be by Australian ballot. We will hold an informational meeting. And I'm going to ask the board to talk about when that meeting is going to be tonight. It will probably be the Saturday prior to town meeting, which is February 26th. When do you hold yours? Uh, we try to hold it when we have our select board meetings. So yeah. we'll we'll have, I'm not sure we haven't discussed how many we're going to have, but we'll have as many as possible. We you generally have those on the Monday before town meeting and we may have it, you know, other Mondays before that. Okay. Do you have more, you, you hold the more than one informational meeting? Yes, we, we like to because especially with no open town meeting, we want to get out as much information as we can. And yeah. if we do the mail-in ballots, which we may do though we haven't decided yet, um, we like people to have an opportunity to discuss the issues as much as possible. So, yeah, we should, uh, we can, Cal Select Board can talk about it. We did an informational meeting last year and it went really well. Yeah, you only, but you only did one. Right. Yeah. That's, I mean, we're used to, we're used to doing things on the floor. So this was all new to us. Yep. Yeah. yeah, we'll probably have more than one we did last year. So, okay. So did, did you have uh, equal level turnout at both? If you had two last year? I think we had more than two. Oh, really? And, but good turnout at all of them? And, and a diversified turnout? I wouldn't say we had a great turnout every single one. As I remember, we did not. But we had some turnout. Probably most at the Monday before. Is that correct, Bruce? Yeah, we had the, the three of them in two in February and then the night before. Yes. And definitely the most was the night before. Yes. And you did and you did that on Zoom? What's that? Did you do it on Zoom? Yes. Okay. Yes, we did. So but I guess my question, I wasn't clear. Uh, if you had three meetings, were there different participants at each of the meetings so that I mean if it's all the same people that it's Maybe not worthwhile. I'm just wondering what the spread is between. No, it's different. It's different people. Okay, that's good information. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, so um, I guess we'll have to go to so the. What is, what's that? I was gonna say, what is? What do you want to do first? I want to ask the East Coast yeah. like what what they think of the budget because I'd like to get that done. Um, I think Judith's concern with the budget last time uh, that vaccines for the health workers were going to cost more money. I think that's what I got out of it, Judith. Is that correct? Hey, what? Can you say that again? Sorry, that was, I was concerned that the not having a vaccine or testing policy would result in 
more um, EMFD employees being susceptible to COVID resulting in absences, which would impact the ability to provide service, but, but would also impact staffing and the need to hire additional staffing, which might be more expensive, blah, 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 blah. But we've, I've seen um, their new policy and I appreciate the efforts that they've made. So I, um, I no longer have that concern. Callis has, has not seen the policy. Well, the chief is here and he can go over the policy with you. We're not, we're not going to eat up all night on it, but I've talked to uh, Chief Ty twice about the policies. He's given me a huge amount of information. He's got a lot to share with you. Is that what you want to do, Ty, right now? Well, I guess or, I wonder why Callis didn't receive it. I, I, I also want to move on to the beyond the budget. <laughs> Um, we have Judith, myself, John, Amy here. Um, what do you think? What do you think about the fire department ambulance service budget? Uh, the rest of the East Montpelier Select Board. I'm fine with it. I approve yeah. it. Would approve it. Okay. Yep. And Amy. Yeah. Good. So why don't we get that out of the way? Make a motion to approve that budget. I'd I'd like to see that happen. So we can keep moving the conversation on. I would move to approve the East Montpelier Fire Department budget as proposed. I'll second it. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 The ayes have it. They appear to have it. They do have it. So the budget's passed. Um, now, I, I'd like to move to the truck. Is that something you want to move to, Denise? Sure. Okay, so the proposal that the fire department has made to us, I'm just going off the top of my mind here, but um, they were going to pay for a little over half the truck, which is 400 and some odd thousand, and ask the towns for about 200,000, 130 was going to come from East Montpelier and 65 from Cowles. Is that correct, everyone? That's a, yes. That's, that, that's one of the proposals they've made. I personally think it's a very fair proposal. I don't know what the rest of the select board thinks of it. And I don't know what Cal thinks of it. So here we go. Um, I think from Cal's perspective, the fact that they're paying a, a huge part of, I think for a huge chunk of the truck is really, um, really a good thing. So you're saying Callis is willing to pay the 65 and? We're putting it on our warning. Okay. Yep. Okay, good. All right. Fair enough. Um, Judith, John, Amy, what do you all think? Yes, John. I think it's a, I think it's a really good deal. Actually, I don't yep. want to give, I don't want to give Chief Roland too much credit, but uh, I really appreciate the fact that he picked up, they were going to pick up that large or larger share of what I expected of the truck. Yep. So I, I, we, I appreciate it. Yep. I, I'm on the same page with John. Same thing. And Judith? Um, yeah. No, I think it makes sense. I would approve. I, I think one of the things um, I've talked to Ty with is um, if we put it on the warning, which I'd like to do. We do need to say the percentages that the fire department's paying, what the town's paying, and make that quite clear uh, how much the fire department is stepping up to pay for this. And I think that we can word the article in the warning in such a way that it clears that up. It makes that clear, which I think um, is in everyone's best interest. The townspeople know what's going on, and that's a good thing. Yeah, I think the, the clearer we can make it, the better. Yes. Um, yeah. Yes, we know it's a huge expenditure. The fire department is going to pay a lot of it. I think that needs to be made clear when uh, we ask the townspeople to approve this. So we can do this on a consensus? Just we don't need a vote or anything, a motion or anything? No, we don't. Yeah, I, can, I think a consensus is fine because we're just okay. talking about putting an article on the warning. Okay. Right. Yep. Then, and then when the warning is done, the, the two separate boards vote on approval of the warning. Yeah, but yeah. 
you and I tonight? No, next yeah, we're, yeah, yeah, we're gonna we're not ready to we'll be doing that next week. Yeah, we're not ready to get our <laughs> articles. We're not ready to get our, okay. Okay, so um as a consensus, does the select board think it's a good idea to put this on the warning? Yes. 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 Okay. okay, great. All right. So we're callous. Are we done with the fire? Okay. Yep, Ty. Um, I just had a quick question if there's thoughts on how it would get paid for in terms of like loans. Would Callus take a loan for the sixty-six thousand? The East Mall payer would take a loan for its portion, just so we have a sense of that of what it would come out to be, you know, once the votes go through, um, in terms of actually purchasing the truck. Yeah, Callus would have to take out a loan. Okay. I, I am not I am not for taking out a loan. We have money in our capital reserve. I think we could do it. Without okay. a loan. I, so I'm the goal the goal is East Montpelier would support its funds through the capital monies. Callus would take out a loan for the sixty six thousand or sixty five thousand right. for its portion, and then East Montpelier Fire Department would take out a loan for the balance of that and carry the note through paying off of the capital over the next few years. So yeah. basically each entity would pay its own portion on its own indebtedness. Yeah. That's, that's my take on it. Now I might be off. What is, is that correct, Bruce? Well, we're throwing numbers around. I thought we had agreed on the numbers. Hopefully we'll get those straightened out. But as far as the East Montpelier being able to take it out of its capital reserve, that's how the warning is phrased right now. Yes. Yes. And that's my perception. Yep. And do we, is just so I'm clear, is the fire department taking money out of their capital reserve or not? Does Duncan have would, to authorize it? We would. So we would take a note out with the bank for the balance of above and beyond the 200,000. And we would carry that note paying the payments out of the capital reserve account on our side. Yeah. With the anticipation then on the front side of it, you know, Callus would have put in its portion, it's one third and East Montpelier would have put it in its portion. Yeah. Yes, my, my question is, is do we have to authorize the expenditure of the EMFD money out of the capital budget? Yeah. Well, I think, I think that would be an action of a one-time action that would cover the lifespan of the truck, just as we have with the other um, apparatus that we're currently paying for with loans for the ambulance and rescue too. Okay. So, so our warning would be structured so that it, it authorizes in addition to our um, taking a loan out for our share, we would authorize that expenditure for the EMFD from their capital fund. Is yeah. that how you're gonna do it, Seth? Yeah, that sounds fine. No, Seth, that's not how we would do it. Oh, you would do it twofold then? No, we would not put before the voters the use of the fire department's capital reserve. Oh, right, of course not, right. Yeah, we're not gonna put that in front of the voters because that's <laughs> something that we yeah. always do ourselves. Yeah, the select board decides that. Yes. But we're kind of approving it right now, even though we're not formally approving it. Right. We would have to. Before you buy the truck, we'd have to do that. But it's implicit in this meeting that we do approve that. Is that correct? Because we're not gonna we're not gonna ask the voters to come up to approve us taking the money out of the capital reserve and not approve. You guys taking the money out of your capital reserve to pay for the truck. We right. can't approve. Or well, there's no point in approving that until we find out if the voters approve the expenditure. Right. Yeah. So it's all, all one for us. Yeah. Yeah. We. Yeah, but it isn't really because the way we've we've structured it in the past is that we approve them taking the money out of the capital reserve to pay right. for those payments. So right. that would, but it's an implicit that we're approving it, even though we haven't formally gone through the process by putting it on a warning. Right. Right. That would yeah. be the effect. The, yeah, regardless, right. So. The effect is that if the Calus voters pass the 
of taking out a loan for the portion of the truck, then we in turn, as yes. a selector, would approve the, the fire department taking money out of the, the capital reserve. Yeah, we would have to do that in a formal meeting. Right, yeah, right. Yeah. So is that your, is that good? You good on that topic? <laughs> Yeah, I think that sounds like it covers it. Then you guys will have a warning that's written jointly between the town. So it will show the same wording in Callis as well as in East Montpelier. Yeah, we should coordinate on the wor wording. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, I think that would be important. I think that's important. Yeah. And I think the other thing to note, just even once the approval, you know, if, if it gets approved at town meeting and once the truck is ordered, this truck would not arrive until sometime at the very best in the early parts of 2023, maybe mid 2023, the way things are going. You mean yeah. fiscal year? You mean fiscal year or calendar year, Ty? Um, cal calendar year 2023 on that. So yeah. it would it would not arrive for it, a minimum 12 months, maybe to 15 months after ordering timeline. So, you know, if it was ordered sometime in the May, it would be sometime in May of 2023 to June, July of 2023, probably before its arrival. Okay, makes sense. Okay, so we've done the budget and the truck. Is everyone satisfied with those two items being um, approved as they are and we can move on? Is the other reason- I have a question. Okay. Based on uh, the timeline that you just put before us, Ty, uh, I guess this is a question to you, Bruce. Is there any issue with voters approving something in March of 2022 that would not be an expenditure until possibly after July 1st, 2023? But actually, just the opposite. You're because of the way we're. It's not going to be in fiscal year 23. It's uh, just I mean, authorizing the select board to do it when it's possible to do it. Yeah. Or when it's proper to do it. Right. Okay. Thank okay. you. But we're approving our budget for 2023 here, so that falls within it. That, that's moot as well. That's we're budgeting for 2023. Provided well, provided at this town meeting. Right. So if the truck is purchased, we you know if it came in 2024, it still wouldn't matter. I don't believe as long as the expenditure is made before then. But yeah, I don't think this could authorize an expenditure where where the money flows out of the pounds. In 2024, right? What's happening? No, this is this is fiscal 23, and it sounds like the truck would come in fiscal 23. The expenditure would be 23, so it's not an issue. No. But where it would be an issue is if if it's in somehow fiscal. there's a major payment that has to be made when the truck arrives or when it's picked up, and that doesn't happen until the second half of calendar 22. No, no, 23, 23. 23. 23. If it happens in fiscal 24, no, 24, it would happen in fiscal 24. It has to go back to the vote. Yeah, right. yeah I mean, if the truck doesn't come in, so, in year 23, then we would have to rewarn it for fiscal year 24. Well, unless it had been totally paid for. In other words, it doesn't matter when it arrives. What matters is when the money goes out. Well, yeah, but if we take out a five year So we just need to pay for it before. Uh, June 30th, 2023 is what we're saying. Yeah, Ty? Yeah, so there would be no issues with that. We, there's no penalties for prepay or anything. Um, there's some benefit, you know, we save a few percent, but it's very little on the prepay, but there would be no issue if towns approved the monies to go ahead, that we could go ahead and take those monies expended within the fiscal year when you needed to, paying the payments to the manufacturer of the truck and, and take care of that issue altogether. So it would be a non-issue. Yeah, it's a non-issue, I think. But. Okay, so do we have anything more to ask of Ty while he's here? Yeah, I guess I want to know what, we didn't receive a copy of the policy, so what, what is the policy? That Ty's here to discuss. Yeah, so the, the, it was more of a question directed from East Montpelier, several select board members in East Montpelier to, to the East Montpelier Fire Department of if we were all vaccinated and things and the answer is no we are not all vaccinated we have several members we have several staff people that are not vaccinated um we can forward you the the all the information 
basically we have we have extensive safety policies and COVID guidance policies that have been in place since the very beginning of this. They're ever changing for us, working with the health department, working with the hospital, um, as well as internal. And um, you know, in any any world, it's difficult to mandate somebody to say, hey, you have to be vaccinated, not vaccinated, but the option we adapted, the only thing then changed that we've done to what we already had in place was adding the option to have somebody test weekly if they choose not to be vaccinated. And um, that will be implemented and started as of February 1st, 2022. So, so that would be a requirement, the testing, Ty? The, the testing will be a requirement for that, you know, and again, that will follow CDC guidelines for as long as those pieces look like they're in place and things. Eventually, this is going to be the new normal, and a lot of these, you know, things will change and adjust as, yeah, as everybody's seeing. Um, so that's the current policy as to what you see. We'll get it in front of you guys where you can see it. But uh, Ty, Ty, yeah. so PCR test is the accurate one, as we know. Um, it, it's, it would seem to me to make sense that you required a weekly PCR. And then when someone arrives on duty, they do the 15 minute test in addition, because there's a lag, a three day lag on the PCR. And um, so if you require the weekly PCR test, and then when they come on shift, they do a 15 minute test just to, to cover the gaps. And then you're good. Yeah, I think if you read the guidelines, we've got them stat. I think that most likely with that, there will be, if we receive a positive test from, we're probably going to do antigen tests internally on there to start. And if we receive a positive test, then the employee will have to go have a PCR test to clear where they need to be. Right. But the employees can have a negative test, uh, you know, a quick test, and be contagious. I just talked to somebody yep. who came out negative on the, and then it turns out they had it and they were sick as dogs. Yeah. I really don't see how it's even conceivable that we would let someone to be in an ambulance with sensitive people if they haven't been tested on the, uh, the, the miraculous test. The, the antigen test is 50% efficacy. So, you know, you guys are the EMTs. I would think you'd be most schooled in that. Um, and I, like Mark, have a family member who uh, their their daughter tested positive uh, with the antigen and was positive. The mother tested negative and with the PCR was positive. So um, just FYI, it's, you, you're going to be potentially the EMTs anyway, not the fire people, but the EMTs are gonna be going to houses increasingly of old people, like my neighbor who's on her last legs and um, they could be potentially the reason that the person doesn't make it if they expose them. And you know, just so you know, my understanding is with the vaccines that those like me who are boosted actually mask the symptoms very well. And so I can actually be highly contagious. And if I were an EMT and infect a, say an elderly person with it, who's immunocompromised and kill them unwittingly. Um, so um, it, even for people who are vaccinated, it's really important that they get, I think at minimum, the antigen test to vaccinate people. I think everyone should get a PCR if you're on EMT weekly and then the antigen test to fill the gaps. So you've got Travis here that's had his hand up for a while. Can, can you let him speak? Travis Shores. Hey there. Travis Shores from Callis. Um, very quickly, um, I am a prior EMT and firefighter both in Mass and in Vermont. And um, my wife actually works at CVMC right now in labor and delivery, which is also emergent care for a lot of people who come in both with COVID positive symptoms and otherwise. And one of the things that they are seeing quite frequently at the hospital is a rapid test at home proving negative and the PCR coming back positive. It's a new phenomenon that's taking place right now. So it's not really that uh, effectual to say that we're gonna put all our trust in a daily rapid test and think that we're all gonna be right. you know, in any way prophylactic to the actual uh, 
COVID vaccine or the virus that's out there right now. What, the, what I will say though, is that as an EMT that also worked a lot with law enforcement and hospitals, the rates have been well over four times the amount of COVID spread among first responders that are out there. So there are people right now, I mean, even a coworker of my wife, um, you know, in her family, law enforcement as well, tested negative at home, positive at the hospital after she had already been in contact with sensitive populations of people who had no uh, ability to get the vaccine. So policy wise, um, I think, and this is my own opinion right now, the most responsible thing to do would be to mandate that people do get vaccines. And when we say we don't hear about anybody ever mandating vaccines, well, that was actually the policy for all our school children up until the COVID ha happened. That, I mean, I got a call the other day about my daughter not getting a hep A vaccine booster in time. And I said, you're calling me about hep A during a <laughs> pandemic, that you're not mandating a vaccine for that. Don't we wow. find that a little strange? And so yeah. I always found that if I was going to be in the best care scenario, like I trust my own body, I trust my own health, I did get vaccinated, but you know, I'm a pretty healthy guy. I don't hey. want to be a walking death sentence to somebody unwittingly. And that's kind of where my policy would be right there. To do the most diligence I can, if I can have a body that can receive a vaccine, to not be able to be in a place where I'm going to affect my coworkers and we're going to lose time and then have to hire people um, and stress the very thin amount of workers that we have currently right now anyway. So that's my two cents. I'll be quiet for now. Thank you. Thank you, thank you Travis. Thank you, Travis. So I, I, I have something else to add. Um, I know it doesn't surprise you, John Jewett. Um, no, it doesn't surprise me at all. <laughs> I'm still awake now. I, I go back to 35 years. Um, so we, we uh, out of Callis, and I think maybe East Montpelier, we were sued, or the fire department were sued uh, under the legal premise that the East Montpelier Fire Department was our, our designate for emergency response and all that stuff. And uh, our insurance did not cover us because East Montpelier Fire Department, passive would not cover us because East Montpelier Fire Department was a private nonprofit and they weren't a municipal entity. So because of that, I don't feel one that we can compel East Montpelier Fire Department to do anything because they're a private nonprofit. But at the same time, it sets us up for massive liability if the EMTs if we're funding a program such as the EMTs and the trucks and all the training and everything else that leads up to someone knocking on someone's door with a stretcher in hand, um, <laughs> we could be sued. And I think there's very good argument. We would lose for actually getting ourselves bound up in contracts and, and funding programs that are maybe in the eyes of the law, not protective of the populations we serve. So. I just want to put that out there, folks. Good point, John. Cool. Thank you. While we may not be able to compel them directly, we have a contractual relationship with them. We can right. put whatever we want in that contract. Well, we, right, we, I guess we could, um, but we're not reopening the contract, are we? Well, you've made a very interesting point. Right. There's always the opportunity to no passage wouldn't cover us. Nope. Well, then I think we have a real issue here. So I think that um, we've conveyed our feelings appropriately and Ty can put out the information he has to me. Um, and I think there's some other people, Ty, probably Denise has said something about not getting your protocols or whatever it is. You wanted yeah, some more? Yeah. Seth? Yes. We, we, we have What's that? If, Go ahead, Denise. If we had had the document that you all have, we might have been more prepared to discuss this tonight. I still actually, don't I, I don't have the document. I, I just yeah. talked about it with Ty. I don't have any documents. So, Seth, Seth, a couple of things. One, uh, Callis, if you want to download the documents from the East Montpelier website, you're welcome to do that. They're they're posted there, right on the front page. And uh, to Ty, I want to thank you and the rest of the fire department for being responsive to our concerns and developing this new policy. Yeah, I do too, actually. Yeah, I, I think, think for clarity, it's a tough issue. It's a tough. I issue. think for clarity, these policies have been in place. The only thing we changed was adding the testing portion of it. 
And I hear what Travis is saying and the concerns and everything. However, the reality is you can be fully vaccinated and be a carrier and not know it and spread it to whoever. I think the key element here that is the key difference in what we do is the PPE that our staff wears on every call going in. We do not blindly going into somebody's house, knowingly exposing, even long before COVID, we don't blindly go in and expose people, right? We're wearing safety gloves, we're wearing gowns where we need to, we're wearing Tyvek suits, goggles, masks, eye shields, all kinds of protection methods that are not in place for the typical general public, right? And that is our standard protocol when we go into the hospital. The same when we're exposed to a patient in the back of the ambulance, we have safety procedures that are in place that we uphold and that we do. We do different procedures now differently than we did before because of the COVID. Um, and again, we're under the constant guidance of the emergency room and our med control as to what the standards are. There was a reminder notice that came out from our med control today, you know, just reminding people to be wearing their N95 masks, their eye protection and gloves on all calls and things, you know. And again, it's not because there's a rampant disregard for it. It's sometimes there's some squads around and our squad has been very efficient and effective and wearing the PPE as needed. And I think that is the key difference in what we're looking at here in terms of vaccinated, unvaccinated, exposure risk to the general population. So, yes. so the, the CDH, um, I'm assuming that's the hospital you're talking about, um, they, they, your, your policy for protecting against the spread of COVID um, with and without vaccines, uh, vaccinated personnel um, are consistent with CVH's policies for you guys. They're good with what you're doing, essentially. Ty? Essentially, yes. I mean, our, ours are not necessarily parallel to or guided by the specific hospital to its employee guidance. However, we have guidance that comes out in, in effective reminders from our, um, you know, from our med control and everything. Um, again, so this is from, this was today. Uh, no, this was, sorry, from the 7th, dated 1-7-2022 from Dr. Ellen Stein, who is our immediate med control for District 6 Ambulance Board. Okay, she says, annoying reminder, please wear your N95 and eye protection on all calls and in whatever possible, even at the station. These are the next few several weeks are going to be rough and something we just need to get through. Again, that's just a reminder from them as we do it, you know, and upholding standards and things. When we go into the hospital, all patients that, that we carry in, transport in, have masks that are put on them prior to arrival to the hospital. So again, we work hand in hand with them and the, the standards that are there. We have no inhibitors to anybody who's not vaccinated that they cannot enter the building through the emergency department. They go in wearing the proper PPE as needed through, through patient delivery. Sounds good. Any more questions for Ty? Any further comments, Cal Select Board? Not now. Not now? Okay. I appreciate you taking the time, Ty, to answer everyone's questions and do things as well as you do. I know it's a lot of work. Tremendous. Yeah, thank you. We appreciate the support and you know we understand the questions, but we do up here and uphold a high level of, you know safety for our individuals and staff, but also more so for the population that we serve. And we fully understand the risks that are out there with this. Yeah. Okay, so thank you everybody. I think, Callis, are you done with us? Are we done with you? I think so, yeah. I think I so. Yeah, uh, send that form along, Bruce, would you? The form? The form, or I'm sorry, the policy that Ty was referencing. I guess it's on the. Send it to Denise. It's on the website. On whose website? The fire departments or East Montpelier's? East Montpelier's. Oh. East Montpelier's, right. Okay. We shall look for it. Thank you all. Good to see everybody. Yes. Stay nice. Happy stay New Year. Stay <laughs> work. Uh, Seth, wipe the sweat off your brow, would you? Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I got to have another Corona. <laughs> as soon as I'm done. <laughs> uh, okay. Um, so it looks like we're a little early to open our meeting. Is that going to be a problem?
I don't think it's a problem with that. Okay, perfect. Um, so if, let's let's go to review of minutes is the next thing we have. Which I know Amy has reviewed them. I have. Um, John has. John has. Who else? Um, to Judith? To approve the minutes of December 20th, 2021 as submitted. Second that. And we have a second. All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. The ayes appear to have it. They do have it. Um, minutes are done. The next thing is the town treasury report. Uh, Seth, can you go yes. to public comment? Because you didn't go before. Oh, whoops. Public comment. <clears throat> public, 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 public. I see some names here, um, but I don't see hear any public comment. Um, we did do additions to the agenda, so we did do public comment. So the next thing is town treasury report. Uh, so I don't have that in front of me, though I could get it, I guess. Uh, what are we looking at? Can you? Exciting. I had one question. What's the final column with the little tiny decimal point on it? I couldn't figure that out. The yellow in that final column. Yeah. What is that indicating? Interest rates. Okay. Thank you. So the first page of that <laughs> treasury report, Don has the interest rates out to the far right. Okay. Okay. What do we have to worry about in this budget? Well, as far as the, this is just the treasury report from the end of December. Okay. It's showing that you have money. Okay. Otherwise, it's not showing much. Okay. <laughs> And the percentages seem like they're pretty much appropriate. Yeah, they, there's nothing out of line at this point that I've seen. Right. On either right. the revenue or the expense line. Okay. Um, we can move on then. If no one's got any burning questions, it doesn't look like they do. Mm -hmm. I could be missing something, but I don't think I am. Um, we have a road foreman that has been with us for a few minutes and he's champing at the bit. <laughs> so perhaps, <laughs> perhaps we should move on. I'm using that as because I've been around horses a lot. <laughs> pretty appropriate. <laughs> um, so I'm going to say let's move to item D. The road foreman report is truck replacement options. And Guthrie's here to replace to present that to us. All right. You have the floor. Yeah, I uh, did some shopping and came across what I thought were pretty uniform numbers for what you guys have all seen in the past. Um, you know, if you're going to stick with the 10 year replacement plan, uh, I'd have to say the Mac probably still holds it uh, when you break it down over 10 years because it's not certain the other brands want to hold up for those other three outside of that seven year mark. Uh, we had tremendous luck I and mean, this the 13 still going strong uh, minor repair stuff uh, I think we can get another three four years of the spare truck easy out of it um, which would be really nice uh, handy to have that extra truck uh, as a 10 wheeler so and uh, when it comes to chassis that's kind of what I came up with um, and then went down the plow equipment side of things. Uh, Tenco did move out of town. Um, so they are located in New Hampshire now. Uh, really? They're owned by the same company that owns HP Fairfield. Oh, so, really? yep, so they're not they're at the very town anymore? Weren't they at very town? E yep. They were up at the old Bombardier building. Uh, yep. They moved out of there last month. Oh, they yeah. are now in the old Caterpillar building in Hopkinton, New Hampshire, right down by wow. Claremont. Really? Uh, HP Fairfield's in the same building. They're both owned by Alamo Group. Um, so oh. uh, the distance is the same for parts. Distance is the same for all of that. Uh, the difference is when we got spare parts for a Tenco, we've got spare parts for what would be a fourth truck that would be identical as far as wear parts. 
Right. Um, so important. it doesn't really make a lot of sense to bring in a different brand to me. No. Um, the stock, different parts. No. Um, we have good luck with the Tenkos. Uh, not putting anything on myself, but I know them inside and out, but they're not a lot different than the MGs either. But parts wise, they are different. They different parts, but they do the same project type of stuff. So, so you have to um, go all the way down to New Hampshire for parts now? So what we're be what we're finding right now is that our salesman for HP Fairfield lives in Craftsbury, which is very handy because he has to <laughs> go to the shop at least once a week, is what he told us. So he's going by. <laughs> yeah. So he yeah. said, you know, if it's a, like a stock order stuff, then yeah. not a problem. Um, and they're 50-50 so far um, with mower blades and stuff like that this spring. We get those through HP Fairfield. Um, it was a little bit hit and miss. They had some of the stuff. They didn't have some of the stuff. So um, they ended up shipping some stuff up and he brought some stuff up. So it wasn't terrible. Uh, right. It wasn't like we ran out of anything. Yeah. So um, well, with so the- I, with the same equipment on all the trucks, you're going to be in pretty good shape. Uh, yeah. You mean you carry yeah. one bed chain for four trucks, you know, right. and that's, that's where we're at. We keep two used ones that won't fit anymore because they've got five or six feet that are demolished, gone out of them. Yeah. And then we keep one brand new one uh, that's yeah. all machine oil and nice. Like it was fresh out of the factory built. Yeah. Um, so that's pretty handy for me. Uh, like you say, the little bit of price difference by the time you start stocking any parts you you've changed that price difference you've already spent it in parts that you may never even use yeah 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 but you can or always end up in, in stock when the truck's done so. you can always rob a part in an emergency off another truck that's <laughs> it is a in that case hopefully you can just run the other truck because we will be in a spare tender so. right yeah no i hear you so the um now, you weren't going to trade off the International on this truck, or are you just going to sell it? So th- we've got some options on that. Um, I think that our best bet might be actually putting it up for auction, whether it's through Auctions International or Minissi Bid. Uh, yeah. that, our first speed cart came through Minissi Bid, um, which was actually pretty handy. Um, but I've never sold anything through either of them. Uh, but the state is selling all their stuff through Auctions International. Yeah. Um, getting fair money out of them. Uh, their, their smaller stuff, like their, their pickups and stuff like that. I think they get crazy good money for it way better than you would get on a trade in. Yeah. Um, Yeah. But anyway, the, so I think that would be a really good option to what I'm getting for vibes out of the salesman's are either. They don't want to give you a price, um, for a trade in. They want to see it go out for auction. The big problem is because the chassis is going to be so far out with everybody. Yeah. the truck's going to change. It's going to be a year older by the time they actually take it in trade. So there's a right. lot of things that can change. There's a lot of wear items that can be. Yeah. Worn out. out Worn. Yeah. I mean, that's, right. that truck still until this past week had the original tires, all six tires were the same ones that came with <laughs> their. Yeah. They were all still the original tires. Uh, both inside duels in the back were in bad, bad shape, but just the same. Yeah. Um, it, it's one of those things where he's going to expect yeah not some worn out caps on it when it's gone they're going to want some decent rubber on the back um, yeah so, so. There, if we ordered a truck today the mat say how when will we get it so that's the hard part um uh, no matter who you're ordering through that's getting yeah. tricky right now anywhere from six months to 12 months it depends on the day that you sign really mm-hmm. um they don't really from my understanding, none of them are making any stock vehicles. So they're not making any just this is standard run trucks yeah. to go on the lot. Yeah. If it doesn't have a name attached to it, they're not building it. Huh. So theoretically, you're going to be the next in line. Yeah. <laughs> but you Except might the car have, dealers. Yeah. yeah. I think we're doing the same thing. Yeah. yeah. So, um, which I, that's what I'm having a problem next topic, really, but with the, with the town pickup side of things, I don't even think anyone's going to honor a state contract, to be totally honest. They're just going to say they can't fill it. Oh. Um, they actually, uh, Colchester Dodge got back to them about a truck that they ordered and told them, we can't even build it for that price. We're canceling your order for you. <laughs> um, yeah. And that was a 5,500. So it was a, just a ton and a half or whatever. 
Oh. Right. So, and anyway, that is a little tricky, but hurdles to cross when we get there, I suppose. But uh, huh. so with the Mac, that would be, like I say, it sounds like it would be a solid eight months before the chassis would arrive. And if things shut down, if they run out of parts, it could be eight months before they start to build it, which would probably be closer to 10, 12 months out. Um, but the nice part is it's not like you're ordering a 2022 20, chassis. If it comes, it'll be a 23 or even 24 chassis, theoretically, when it, uh, when it comes, because anything built after about August of 2023 would be. So So that includes the equipment that Tenco would put on in about a year? Is that what you're saying? Or is it eight months to get the truck, another eight months to get the equipment on? Uh, eight months to get the, eight plus months to get the chassis. And right. it sounds like it would be a minimum of four. That sounds right. a little different because they're in a new building. Yeah. Um, so the plus side is if the Fairfield side of the shop isn't busy, the yeah. Tenco, they can go to the Tenco side and work. Yeah. <laughs> the tricky part with that is those people have never built Tenco, even though they're similar, they're different. Yeah. Yeah. Um, right. Right. And they have, I don't know if they have any Tenco crew down there right now. But um, pretty good uh, relationship with Rick Ackerman. He's a foreman in Chelsea. And mm -hmm. he's got a truck sitting in his garage right now, just a bare chassis, because they promised him they'd build it in Barry. Um, and obviously, that's not going to happen. They don't even have a facility there anymore. Mm -hmm. So he doesn't know whether it should be built in Canada, because he doesn't know what they'll be doing, what a new Tenco truck's going to look like. There's going to be a little bit of a phase change to it. Um, same equipment, just probably mounted slightly different is my guess. Um, so we're looking, the short answer is we're looking at about a year. A I would say a minimum of a year. Yeah. Um, I say the, and that's, I, I think that's a fair statement, a minimum of a year. Yeah. So we uh, should, order, I, we should order yeah. now. Right. Yeah. It's like I say, we're not getting bumped by a long ways um, every day that goes by, but we're getting bumped. Yeah. Yeah. Right. I mean, town meeting day is really, truly, the day after town meeting day, those guys might be looking at, I don't even want to joke and say two years, but right. that, if there's a chance that those guys could be, I guarantee it'll be two model years out. Right. Because it's a big, that's what a lot of people wait for is after town meeting. Yep. They let the people vote on it. So we could get to jump on that. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So I'm good with the Mac myself, but. I don't know whatever select board other members think. Uh, what are you all thinking there, folks? I There's not a that. heck of a lot of difference between the bid numbers anyway. <clears throat> right. Um, well, there's $7,000 between the Freightliner quote and the Mac quote. Yeah. If you're happy with the Mac, then I wouldn't have a problem with it because everybody has, everybody has their own experiences. And, and if you have good experiences with the Mac and you want that, then for that amount of money, I don't think it makes a, a lot of difference. I mean, I, I what's that? I, I would agree with purchasing that for the Mac. Yeah, I mean, I pushed for the Mac when I first got on the select board because internationals were just so problematic. And my experience with the Macs was good. It continues to be good. They're good trucks. Um, I think that, in my opinion, we should stick with the Macs. We have a bunch of Macs. They're doing really well for us. We have a good relationship with the dealer. They're not too far away. Yeah, blah, blah. so that's another one of those. Um, Pat up in the service department lives in Woodbury. Yeah, uh, they deliver once a week anyway. So yeah. if it's something small, they drop it at the shop, uh, the town office there and yeah. on a Wednesday. It's the I think their service is awesome. There's other people that will say it's the worst they've ever seen, and I have not experienced any of that. No, me neither. <laughs> I buy parts for my Max all the time up there. It's great. <laughs> so, so, like I say. Uh, Pat Whatever. lives in Woodbury, and if it's something we need in a pinch, if he remembers it, uh, it'll be sitting on the steps. Sometimes seven, eight o'clock at night, he'll throw them on the front steps down there. So, and that's worth a fortune right there. Just having yep. that kind of service, that's worth yep. a fortune. So, um, let's see, uh, Judith. I I would agree. Um, I think the difference um, in pricing is negligible, and I would defer um to the road foreman's recommendations on this 
And Amy, I haven't heard you for a while. Yeah, same. You know. Okay. Okay. <laughs> that sounds good. And Carl, what happened to Carl? He's right there. He's still there. I agree. Oh, you're, you're in the office. That's, <laughs> that's where you are. You're hiding. There you are. <laughs> hiding in plain sight. What's that? Hiding in plain sight. Okay, right, right. Got it. Do you have any uh, strong opinions about the truck? No, I, I defer to Guthrie and your judgment on it. And as others noted, the um, the bids are fairly similar. Yeah. So I think we should order that truck. Do we need to have a motion on that? Yes, please. Okay. Yep. Second. We have a second. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Okay, that takes care of that truck. Now, what was the other? You're going to talk about the pickup? Yeah, that's after doing some shopping. I, it will be interesting to see if anyone wants to honor any state contract purchasing agreements at all. Um, the state just backed out on 28 truck and 28 big plow trucks, I believe it was. Um, they just said we're not doing it this year. Um, so it'll be interesting to see what kind of mess that turns into in a year from now when they do need to replace at least all those trucks, if not more, and their trucks might be a year and a half, two years out. Um, so anyway, uh, the as far as the pickup goes, um, did some shopping around. Um, the Dodges do seem like they're pretty beefy truck. Um, they're pretty fairly priced i don't know they had to didn't get back to me at all this week i ended up calling three times and i didn't get a call back at all from uh, the commercial guy up there where are you so, where are you dealing up in at goss or whatever it is yeah 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 they hold the state purchasing for the oh dodge so yeah yeah so he he hasn't got back to me this week. And when he did give me that one quote we got, he said things were changing that week is when he was redoing the pricing. So I don't know if, I just don't know if they're going to honor it. That's kind of what I'm hearing through grapevines is unless you've got your name signed. And when that was back in before any snow hit October, he was working on the prices and it sounded like he had five or six to order. And he thought he'd be able to order them this quarter, the first at January 1st. So um, I don't know yeah. if that just means he can't do anything and he doesn't want to let that out. Uh -huh. So if you, if you wanted, to, if you wanted to, you could probably go on a Barrymont Fair Road and find out if they would honor or, or some way meet meet the state bid price. I mean, I've seen Lamoille Valley uh, Ford do the same thing when when the Ford dealership in on in Montpelier came in you know with they had to, they had to, you know they had the bid appropriate they, they were the appropriate bid company and uh, <clears throat> but they couldn't get the truck so Lamar Valley got it yeah um, okay so okay. these guys might do the same thing it'd be worth asking them anyway yep i can do that and like i say uh, being it's not that commercial size i think we could get the service local too so yeah but, Which for warranty doing? purposes that's what Can I somebody did. help me out? Where, where in the capital budget do we see the pickup? That'd be a negative one. Right, it's gone by the replacement year. I just don't see it in, on page six where we have our vehicle. Look for the cheap thing. <laughs> There's a six wheeler, 100,000. I don't know. I don't have the pages in front of me, so I can't say. So, what do you want to do, Guthrie? Wow. So pick up with flow, of course. Yeah. And it has a minus two on it. Got it. Thank you. You want to just keep us updated? You just want to keep looking into it? I I don't know what else to tell you. I'd hate I don't want to yeah. It's one of those things where I guess I'll try to get a pinpointed number for your guys' next meeting. Um I I just I'm not getting answers out of the dealerships. And if you can't get that, then yeah, but you'll kind of get an situation. answer eventually. I mean, I had to go buy a pickup the other day and there was like one coming in in two two months and three months, so I yeah. like well I'll just take it. <laughs> you know it's just I like short. Uh, Midstate did have a thing uh, a commercial the other day that said they were in the 
top three in the in New England, I think it was for or northern New England, top three for most stock vehicles or something. Doesn't necessarily mean it's a truck, but <laughs> I was anyway. up at the Newport dealer and there was a bunch up there. At Dodge. North Point? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Good to know. Yeah. There was a twenty one fifty five hundred up there actually. But I don't know what there's right this minute, but there were pickups up there. <laughs> okay. So I'll do some um, looking around. Uh, yeah. I say, I, and maybe someone else who's not in the commercial side would let the cat out of the bag on what the deal is there if they're just plain not going to honor it. Right. On the state contract. Yeah. Well, they probably aren't going to because there's, they're in short supply and the state contract was probably on the low, low, low price. Yeah. So they're going to get more money and not on the contract. Yeah. That's probably what's going to happen. So, okay. So you'll get it back to us on that yeah as sad as it is uh like i say i i understand you guys' position there it's not like you can just say yep go buy a truck that's you need a fixed number to go after we need so. something <laughs> yeah uh, like i say i i can't get a hold of that salesman from up there so Let's try another uh, one we'll do some shopping around and i'll get back to you as soon as i can with it yeah sounds good all right was, was there anything else that you were ought to talk to us about See, this is when you guys have those pamphlets and I don't. <laughs> <laughs> um, so let's see. We've got highway operations on the next item. Do you stick around for that? Okay. Well, we're going to look it over. Okay. But you're done talking to us about vehicles. Yeah. Yeah. I don't have that. I've shared. I've spilled all yep. the beans I can. Well, we got the big truck order and that's good that is right that's a big hurdle yes so the next item is discussion on fy 2023 budget development and your highway operations is the next thing on there yep so um i'm gonna look it over on the select board memo here and what did you have only minimal increases it says so it doesn't look like anything yep. Doesn't look like anything. Anybody have any questions for Guthrie on uh, highway operations? The silence is deafening, but I'm in Florida, you, so I probably can't hear everything. You have uh, you've already done an increase on the wages this year, anyway. So, yeah, yeah. that was pretty significant. For that's more yeah. than I would normally put that budget up, anyway. So, yeah, um, yeah. So like now, say there's a couple hundred dollars for. What was it? It was two hundred over uniforms, trash maybe. Something. It looks like uniforms, uniforms like trash, five hundred for rubbish. Right. Yeah, that's not much. Um, now, is the current road crew okay with staying in East Montpelier and <laughs> they happy or <laughs> why? <laughs> <laughs> that's probably well, a loaded question. It probably shouldn't answer. <laughs> But I didn't really want to be driving a truck all winter, plowing the roads. So well, it'd be hard, you know. There's a 2,200 mile difference, I would say. <laughs> I don't know where the snow line is, but uh... yeah. But I am getting my CDL, but I think wow. that's just, yeah, I know. But anyway, what did? Yeah. How's it? How are things looking? I think everyone's pretty content right now. Yeah, um, which is a good thing. Yep. Uh, yeah, I think okay. we've made it through a little bit of a patch where we could have had some rough going. Um, yeah, yeah, but that's yeah. yeah that's, it's the the wheel's still turning. Um, yep, I think Callus is still down at least one guy. Uh, yeah, Plainfield just went through this past weekend with one guy instead oh. of three. Oh, so it's they're they're back to two out of three at least now. So it's. They're going to have an, another spot filled up over there pretty soon, I would say. So, and yeah. it doesn't seem to be any of my guys. So, wow. Well, thank you yep. for all of that info. Um, anybody have any questions for Guthrie before we go on to the next item? Thanks for all your work on on evaluating these bids and everything, and making the extra effort to go out and talk to people and move forward with that. Yeah, it's way easier if you can get them to come talk over the hood of the truck <laughs> yeah. yeah 
So well, it's, stra- it's strange times right now. It's it is. Yeah. Used to be, oh, go out and buy a vehicle. It wasn't that hard to do. Now it's like, ooh, can't even find one. It's yeah. Nuts. It's crazy. Order that. We'll get it to you in six months, maybe eight. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And no guarantee. Yeah. And don't put a deposit on it because we're going to sell as soon as we get it. <laughs> yeah. Really? Yeah, I'm serious. I know. I, get it. I know. Um, okay. So thank you, Guthrie. And, right, guys, uh, you thank you all for your support again. Yep. And good luck with everything. Good luck <laughs> with the weather. Good luck with the weather. Yeah. Um, it, uh, daytime high for you tomorrow is where? Uh, I think it's <laughs> 75. <laughs> well, yeah, but you, what's the wind chill? See? You know, oh, yeah. I like the breeze because you know what? It gets hot out there. So a little <laughs> bit of breeze, it's really good. Yeah. But sometimes I have to sit on the porch because it's just too hot. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah you better get a fan out it's really hot playing polo it really yep. is yeah yep all right <laughs> enjoy so, the week i'm not looking forward to coming back um <laughs> yes we are no we're not okay <laughs> uh have a good evening thank you see you, you thank you okay so going along with highway operations review a draft fy 2023 budget um but we already kind of talked about that did we not about what? We, i missed what you said did we already talk about the budget we kind of did but what you got? i'm looking at your select board memo yeah so the you've got the final budget in front of you unless you've got a problem with it the thing you need to make the decision on is what you want to do with the capital plan capital reserve fund Right. Funding. Yes, I see that. Um, so our choices were keep it the same. So your choices are whatever you want to do, but yeah. If we keep it the same, our tax rate will go up to 3.42%. That looks like what you're saying. Two, $2.31.90 increase in the municipal tax rate. Um, revenues up, expenses up, yeah, payroll lines. So that's if we keep the capital reserve plus, keep it at the same. What and what do we vote in the capital reserve every year? No, what what you decided to do was carry it on the budget as requested by the capital improvement committee. So you've actually built in a thirteen thousand dollar increase to that item yep you talked about possibly not including it going back to level funded right and that's what the red numbers are the level fund the black numbers are the thirteen thousand increase okay i don't see any black or red numbers on my piece of paper but that's fine um so the two so on the bullet on your memo the draft budget anticipates a 4.06 or 3.042 increase overall, 2.31 or $1.90. The $1.90 is without the 13,000? Yes. Okay. Yes. Right. Ah. And why did they go up 13,000? Well, John can answer that. Um, I would have to think about it for a minute. Um, what heck did we do? I think that was a that was a normal increase that, that it was designed to do every year. It was to go up to keep pace with paving and to keep pace with other purchases that are there, so we don't run negative. And I, I don't think you're running more. negative. No, but eventually you have to keep. It's not. It's never a good idea not if if you put money in the capital fund, you put the same amount in every year. It's not a budget increase. If you take that, if you cut that one year, the next year is going to be a budget increase. So you're not going to get away from a budget increase if you just for one year, it's not sustainable. So I think that we were going with a normal increase because it, 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 it wasn't really an increase. It's not no, an increase I, in the budget. I understand that. But the thing is that this year we've got um, our payroll has gone up significantly. Right. So I'm trying to soften that impact. 
with the tax rate increase. Well, I don't okay. think that, I, I think that if you want to do that, it's appropriate. I, I, I just think that we left it as it was. <clears throat> yeah. Oh, I'm not sure that we've increased it every year. Have we, Bruce? Yeah. We did the same thing last year. We skipped okay. the planned increase. So this is actually two years worth of mm -hmm. incremental increases. Oh, okay. Huh. The other thing about the capital plan is it's mm -hmm. it's I'm gonna say optimistic about spending money on paving that we haven't spent because our paving plan was based upon repaving a lot sooner than we have. So we've built up a lot of money in our capital reserve <clears throat> because of the paving. Um, because we haven't had to repave and we've gone on 10 years without having to repave. I know what, that we're going to have to, but we also have a lot of money in there. The, the thing is, the thing to keep in mind that, you know, several years ago, paving was pretty inexpensive yeah. compared to what it's going to be now because the price of uh, yes. oil products have gone way out of sight. So if right. you cut the budget, you may end up coming back with bids this next time around are going to be kind of surprising. Astronomical, yeah. Yeah. So you, and that's why I think that's why we were chose to 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 fund it. Right. Huh. The other thing to remember is that you have quite frequently uh, directed part, a portion of your end of year surplus to the capital reserve fund. So yeah. Indirectly, you've always overfunded that particular line. Right. Right. And of course, that may not happen the next year. May not. But you can always choose to pull it out of the capital, re out of the reserve fund, and utilize it. We have a, we have a uh, emergency fund. Yeah, your fund balance, right? Yeah, no, well, it's oh, not yeah. kind of fund balance. A reserve fund. Contingency too. fund, contingency yeah. fund. We have one anyway. Mm -hmm. So we probably wouldn't pull money out of the capital reserve. I don't know. What does everyone think about the thirteen thousand increase for the capital reserve fund? I mean, I'm not that worried about one way or the other. I just thought we have so much increase in payroll that I'd like to soften that a little bit. Any, any other select board members have any strong thoughts on that? My gut would be don't soften it by taking money out of the capital reserve. That would be just my gut feeling. Yeah, especially if we declined uh, an increase last year in the capital reserve. Is to put it in this year? Yeah, I, I mean that's. Yeah, I like the idea of softening the the increase, but I'm I'm with Amy. I'm not sure capital reserve is the place to do it. And I'm, and I don't have another candidate. Yeah. Yeah, there aren't any other places. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean that's basically our only huge increases is payroll and more for the fire department and then the capital reserve. Yeah. I mean those are the main increases that we're looking at. But the payroll is pretty big, mm -hmm. but the municipal rate 2.31 or 1.90 is probably doesn't make that much difference. So we could keep with the addition to the capital reserve and go go with that and go with a 2.31 cent increase in the tax rate. Yeah, and just depending on how this year turns out, you also do have the option of increasing the even though you're not showing it, increasing the the uh, fund balance use, yeah, essentially giving back surplus, right? When we make the tax decision come July and August, right? So we're not making a final decision, but what we're doing is trying to make a more or less final decision on the budget, right? Mm -hmm. And the town warning. All right. Well, I'm okay with the adding the thirteen thousand in this kind of pennies to me in a way, and. I do understand that there will be increased costs coming our way on paving. Trucks are expensive, blah, blah, blah. Expenses are going up. So going along with what John said about increasing every year, you're trying to keep up with inflation, et cetera. And of course, inflation is huge right now. Probably our best bet to put the 13,000 in the capital reserve, the additional. So, well, I mean, I'll go along with that. Anybody else? Need a have motion? Any, um, a motion? I don't think we need a motion yet. Well, you, you can or you can wait. Regardless, if you're okay with this as it is now, this is the number that will go in the, the warning. 
for yep. next time. Yeah, but we're not approving the warning yet. So I don't think we right. need a motion. Okay. Okay. So do we have anything else to talk about on the budget side of things? Review of draft FY 2023 budget. The, I just want to highlight the signposts. Uh, they've upped their request, mostly because they, we told them at the time, but they made it error when they, it, it's now three years ago, when they yeah. zero funded themselves, they asked yeah. us not to do one. Right. Uh, they've now realized that they didn't understand how their own budgeting worked. And so they are essentially at the bottom of the barrel when it comes time to our appropriation showing up in December. So they're hoping to pump things up just a little bit to try to avoid being at zero in November. Right. And I just, I don't, I, don't, I, I love the signposts. Everyone loves the signposts, but is there, is there any talk at all about taking that online unless you specifically ask for a paper copy? I mean, it seems like the printing and, and mailing costs are hundred percent of the cost. And I don't know if most people really value the paper copy that much. I would love to read it, but maybe I don't need that. And maybe this isn't the forum to have that discussion. I don't know, but. Many people like the paper copy. But yeah, many people do, but you could opt in perhaps and not just by default send it to everybody in town unless you opt in. Maybe. I guess we can. Yes, Rosie. I can, I can mention that at our next planning meeting if you'd like. Thank you. Yeah. That'll work. Okay, so um, anybody else have anything on the budget? I don't hear anything, so we're going to move on. So the next item, F, is discussion on 2022 town meeting. Consideration of options for conducting 2022 town meeting and forum. So everyone has seen that the bill is out to allow towns to go to Australian ballot or to move the date. I guess the governor is going to sign it soon. He's expected to sign it. So it looks like we have some options in front of us. The option that we chose last year was to mail ballots to everybody. And we had huge participation that way. We had 1,200 people vote. That was tremendous. Um, it was a huge success in my book. We had a lot of people participating in democracy by the power of the vote. Um, I personally would like to see that continue um, since we have the option this year. Uh, I don't know what everyone else thinks. So what do other select board members think or members of the public that have tuned in this meeting about East Montpelier doing what it did last year, having as many forums as possible where people can tune in to talk about the issues and then go to mail ballot, mail in ballots to everybody in town and conduct our town meeting that way by Australian ballot. I don't see that there's another viable option, to be honest. Correct. Yeah, we, we could try to delay the date as we talked about last year, but this virus is so surprising and confounds predictions. So yeah. we might pick a date that has even more viral activity than town meeting day. Yay. Rosie's got something to say. Yes, Rosie. Another reason for not postponing town meeting is that we have to have an election anyway for the Central Vermont Career Center. So we'll be at the polls regardless right. of whether there's a town meeting or not. Right. And this lines up. If we can do our town meeting when you people at the polls, it lines up. It's a twofer or a threefer. Threefer. Um, right. <laughs> to me, that works. It's efficient. People usually vote on those days. They're, they like voting on that day. It doesn't move anything around. Um, so I would I would say that we we made a good decision last year when we decided to postpone any controversial uh, discussions to a time when we could actually discuss them, and would argue for doing that again uh, this year. So not making any any big changes in town governance, even though we are authorized to do that via Australian ballot this year. I'm not sure about that. So that, I'm not going to touch that for the moment. But Judith had something to say. I wanted to see what she had. To yeah, say. I just wanted to concur with what's been said before. I think um, 
the path of the virus is unpredictable, and I don't think that we should delay it pending a future when you yeah. know the pandemic becomes endemic. Um, and I I also agree with you that. Um, we had a, a large turnout of mail-in ballots, and I think it was successful. So that would be, I, I, I think we should do the same this year. Yeah. Um, so I think so too. Anybody else have anything to say on that? I agree totally with, with you folks, with everybody else. Okay. From the board. So Bruce, do we make a motion on that right now? <clears throat> I wouldn't bother because it's it's just in the warning again. Okay. So it's, it's more a case of, are you okay with doing the forum at 7.30 on the Monday night before the official forum? Uh, the way we did it last year. How does that line up with the school? They're at 6.30. Okay. So we're at 7.30. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. That sounds good. So what we'll do for the next meeting is the warning will be essentially what you saw last year. We'll just throw out all the yeah. non-compatible parts that are in it right now. That's right. And we yep. will set up the Zoom meeting and do all the rest so that it's all in that warning for next time. Yep. That sounds good. Um, so that kind of covers that item. Oh, do you want to? We want to cover. We want to talk about what's on the warning. <laughs> I believe. <laughs> I believe that's the next bullet on the agenda. Is discussion on twenty twenty two town meeting warning. Uh, I have a warning in front of me here. I don't, but I can find one. Um, yes, Judith. Yeah, I, I have it. Hold on. Am I? No, I'm not. Um, sorry. Wow. Ah, I'm still. Okay. I'm not muted. I apologize. Um, uh, yeah, I had a couple of questions um, yep. regarding the two options for the um, um, town uh, payment of property taxes. Oh, yeah. And, um, that I, I don't have anything with the first two highlighted articles, um, but I do have one with respect to the current Article 7 and the alternative Article 7. Um, and I guess I would, um, is the purpose of the current that folk can, the um, payment is on time if it's mm -hmm. postmarked or received by November 15th? Is that what the current deal is? Yes. Okay, that's not what we say. We can't just go to the top. Um, just that language is directly from statute. In every uh, the LCD put this on? particular version together. Uh, I agree with you. I think it's yeah. not. <laughs> I think we needed, yeah. Um, but, but anyway, uh, that was my question. If we're going to go through it, I guess I would be, I would opt for the alternative version because, um, um, be, because of how the mailing is, yeah. um, I don't, that would be my suggestion, but I, I don't have a strong opinion on it, but I, I hear you, what you're saying about that was the recommendation, but that's, that's not what that sentence reads. <laughs> um, it's due or postmarked, not due and postmarked. So yeah, the down. alternative version has a, something that we hadn't considered until we got to see the November uh, payments. Payments, right. yeah. Is that the 5 p.m. date may be old fashioned. Mm -hmm. We got a large number of electronic payments between 5 p.m. and midnight. And it seems silly to stick an arbitrary time in there when People are taking advantage of the online options. And they're doing it after they get home from work. Right. Yeah. Right. So can yeah. you do it for 12 p.m.? Sure. Or 12 a.m.? Or just 11.59 p.m.? Yeah. Just yeah. eliminate time. Or just eliminate the time. Yeah. Right. yeah, just don't put that in there. Yeah. I mean, right. we do have that version. And I personally, um, 
availed myself of it this year. <laughs> so, and um, yeah, if people are able to pay online, it's a fairly um, efficient process and you know it's, it's, it's being processed that day. So as opposed to being stuck in um, the mailbox and you don't know when it will go and you'd have to actually go to ensure that you're postmarked on time, you'd have to go to a post office. So. so Judith, the history of this is that we have had the alternative version uh, for a long time up until a couple of years ago. And then uh, some residents at town meeting uh, sprung on the town the idea of uh, the Article 7, the first version listed here on the warning. And uh, arguably, that should not have been taken up in that town meeting because it wasn't properly warned, but it was. And the, the select board was, had not been prepared for it because it wasn't warned. Uh, it did pass at that meeting, and nobody on the select board at the time liked it because we were afraid that yeah, it's, it's too vague, um, something postmarked on a certain date, but you know, things get lost in the mail. What happens if it comes in two months later, for example, or, or just disappears altogether? How do we handle that? Um, however, uh, we didn't get a chance to discuss anything at town meeting last year. And uh, we looks like we won't have a chance to discuss anything at town meeting this year. Uh, our delinquent tax uh, collector, Bruce, has reported that uh, this posed almost no problems. And, uh, and, and well, there, there are almost no um, payments that came in very long after the, the dates in question. Uh, so it seemed to work pretty smoothly. So in accordance with the principle of waiting till we have a town meeting with people in person to make modifications that have been made at a town meeting with people in person, doesn't seem like it's big damage to keep it in place. I'd like to go back to the alternative version with the, the removal of the time on there as we've discussed, but I'd like to wait until sometime when we can get together in person and talk about it. Just out of fairness to the people. Okay, so I'm a little unclear on this. So the current version does allow people to make electronic payments after five and before midnight of May 16th. Is that correct? Correct. And that sounds like it's a pretty darn good idea. Yeah. Yep. I think I, I haven't heard anybody oppose that. So let's do that. <laughs> 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 the the issue here is a postmarked or just due, and it says uh, postmarked. I think all of all of us that I've heard from are in favor of having just due on a certain date, and I'm saying let's wait and make that change yes. when we all get together. Well, we have a town meeting again. I, yeah. I mean, because we talked about this last year, and we decided that since that was already passed on the floor, regardless of whether anybody liked it or not, it would just be confusing at this point. So. Okay, we're gonna stick with the current version because stick with the current version. The few people that go to town meeting haven't had a chance to discuss it. <laughs> <laughs> the twelve hundred people that voted on it last year did have a chance to vote on it, so that was good. So we're just gonna keep it like that. Let's keep it like that. Not presenting both versions to be voted on. No. Oh, no. Right. No. Got it. Okay, so let's go to the next. What's the next controversial? Okay, so going down. Article to, six, I believe, is also something that we need to discuss. Yep, yeah. the second constable. The first constable and the second constable, if needed, being appointed by the select board instead of voted on by townspeople. And again, with this, I think uh, this is something that normally would be voted on in town meeting uh, on the floor. We, we should wait. I, I support it, and I would like to wait. I, I'm going to just correct you on one, uh, one point. Uh, okay. It, the, if you notice, I put it in the normal Australian ballot area uh -huh. because that one's actually by statute in Australia. That ballot. is an Australian yeah. ballot one. Oh, okay. So okay. it doesn't really matter. Right. Oh. Okay. Um, in which case, I'm fine with it. 
Yeah, but <laughs> by statute that has to be an Australian ballot. I'm actually fine with it too, because truth be told, I mean, not that many people are, how many people would have researched that anyway? And you're right. I mean, how many people voted town meeting? Not very many. Oh, no. Nope. So I'm actually okay with putting that on the ballot, knowing that that statute. Yep. Okay, so we'll scroll down, scroll down here. Um, Article eight. Is that a controversial article? Yeah, yeah. I I oppose it in general. Yeah. Um, and and I, I think we have people who are willing to serve in the office of town auditor as elected officials. I think we've heard from townspeople that they want the option of voting for people for offices. And uh, I personally support having more offices that people can get elected to and serve the town that way as long as it as long as it works and you know i've been part of the charter committee that's recommended changes in the um the treasurer and the town clerk from elected to appointed positions for for reasons which i think were, were good in those cases uh the auditor is is different and one of the differences is that you know we uh it's a, a group of people who are working together. It's not one individual who uh, is, is in question there. And so if there's one person who's having a hard time functioning in the position, then we've got two others to uh, work on, on the position. And as I said, it, it, it's worked out. So I would like to, to uh, keep it the way it is. And even if we do decide to change it, uh, I'd, I'd like to see us wait to talk about it at town meeting. It's a big change. Okay, so we've heard from Kyle. Um, let's hear from Judith. She has her hands up. Um, I, I would concur with uh, Carl's recommendation. Um, I too share his belief that if we have townspeople available and capable and able to perform these functions, um, then we should look to them to perform those functions. Um, I also think it's a, a fairly big change and it may be controversial and to do so, I think we should have it discussed on the floor. So I would oppose adding it to the Australian ballot. Okay, so I'm gonna look at it from a different angle. What does a town auditor do? And we also hire an auditing firm already. So. And what have other towns done in the area with this position? So, Bruce, maybe you can fill us in a little bit on that. Oh, as you saw in a, a note I gave you a while back, there, there is no town in our area of our size that still has internal auditors. Um, they, I can hear you. They hire professionals. Right. Like we already do. We do every year. But... Yeah. We do every year. So I'm not sure, it seems like redundant to me. Um, let me hear from John. He mentioned what they did in Hardwick. I'm always interested, town of our size, experienced man like John Jewett in our midst. He can do <laughs> <a> little, <laughs> some gems of wisdom. <laughs> well, <clears throat> yeah, essentially we don't use the, we don't use our own auditors. We use, we, we contract it out. <clears throat> so, um, so we don't have, any auditors that we make use of. I can't remember, I can't recall now if there's people there in name only, but I've never, I was there eight years. I never saw a town auditor aside from the contract auditor, auditors come into our office, so. Yeah, so that's that's my angle on it, is what they do. Other towns have let them go. They don't have the position anymore. I don't understand why we have them. I, I guess it's beyond me. I thought so, it was to write the town report. That's. Contract that also. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So. The other I, I thing guess is I'm not seeing the. You know, I think that having our local folk perform it, I think there's more accountability and oversight, and it also may save the town money. But moving to the issue at hand, whether it should be on the Australian ballot, I think it would be a big change, and I think that people in the town may want to. Um, discuss this issue. So I would propose that we not include it on the Australian ballot, 
that we delay until we are able to meet in person with folk to discuss it. You are aware, Judith, there's a few people go to town meeting, right? Yeah. There's a hundred, hundred and something people go to town meeting. And we have a forum where we discuss this stuff. And we still have the forum. As many forums as we can have for people to discuss this. So I'm not thinking we're shutting the door on anything. We have a forum. We have a lot of voters that can weigh in on this, many more than you would have at town meeting because you only have a hundred and some people to go there. We had over a thousand people voting last year. So when you say not have anybody weigh in on it, I'm not sure where you're coming from. Well, we had at the beginning of this conversation, we started talking about not including on the Australian ballot controversial topics. This would be a controversial topic because we are eliminating town positions or elected positions. Mm -hmm. um, so to be consistent with that policy and that um, way of determining whether there should be a change on the Australian ballot or not, then that would be a controversial topic. That's what sure. Carl said. That was not my position. And I'm not sure that's anybody's position and it's not a policy. It was what we said last year. That's all it was. Consistent so with what we said last year. Well, there are at least two people uh -huh. on the select board mm -hmm. who would have Resist would not that. agree with including yep. it okay. for the reasons that we've discussed. Yes, that's so fine. Yep. Perhaps others want to chime in. Yes. With John, what do you think? I would say if you had it on on the uh, ballot and people voted it down, then you'd have what they what the people of East Montpelier wanted to do. If they passed it, if they approved it, then you have their decision. I don't think you necessarily have to sit in an open forum and argue about it one way or the other. Um, <clears throat> for the most part, um, these these positions don't usually become an issue until you don't have someone to fill a position. And a lot of towns are having a hard time filling these positions because you can't even fill positions that, you know, people are, uh, um, companies are having a hard time finding employees. And we and the, and the reason those changes have been made in some of the other towns is because they couldn't find the people to do the work. Um, and in this case, I think if people didn't agree with it, they'll vote it down. If they agree with it, they'll pass it. Right. And we're gonna have a forum before town meeting um, to talk about this. Just It's gonna be a pre-town meeting. We're required to do it. And we should, we'll talk about it. And if people want to discuss it, discuss it. Maybe they can convince other people to vote against it. Yep. I mean, that's the whole part of being a democracy, sitting down and talking with people. And, and if people have good arguments for or against, then they they may win or not. I don't know. So, so Amy, I don't have a have... problem with it being on the ballot. Yeah, I don't either. So Amy, I haven't heard from you problem with it being on the ballot either. Um, okay. All the above, exactly what you said. Yeah. So we have three of us that are sort of for it, and we have two people are against it. Yeah, I'll, I'll chime in again. Uh, I agree with John that, you know, this is something to look at when you don't have people who are willing to do the job. And we do have people who are willing to do the job, uh, who want to do the job. And I think there's no reason that the select board should ask the town to pull the rug out from under them while they're willing to do that. So putting it on the ballot is an implicit select board endorsement of making the change. And I don't see we have a reason for doing that. Uh, you talk about um, opportunities to discuss this. Yes, there are forums. Uh, Seth, you make fun of the number of people who come to town meeting. You also make fun of the number of people who come to town forum, which is usually about one sixth or, or one tenth of the number of people who come to town meeting uh, in, in normal years. And I think having the opportunity to discuss this in person is, um, is huge for democracy. People listen to each other, people change their mind. I've been very proud of the discussions that our townspeople have had at town meeting and listening to each other coming to good decisions. And third, uh, Seth, you asked, what does this position actually do? Well, the, the statutory requirement is really that they produce a report, the town report. And uh, you know, we have somebody who does a very good job at that. 
in this position as, as an elected auditor. And I think that we should support her in continuing to do that in that position. Um, there's, there hasn't been any talk about discontinuing the person doing it, that she could still be paid, whoever's doing it, to do the town report. I just don't know why we would have three auditors doing something that we hire professionals to do, and their job is to do the town report. That doesn't make any sense to me. No. I, I think you're confused on what the uh, internal auditors do. They, they don't duplicate the external audit. They do other things like produce the town report. We don't have a CPA firm producing our town report. We don't have our internal auditors doing an external audit. Mm -hmm. they're, separate, they're separate functions. Now what, what um, you know, Judith and I had a, a discussion with Deb the other day about a number of things. Uh, Deb Fillion, one of the auditors, and uh, you know, one of the things that she said was she doesn't want to make work. She wants the auditors to do things only where they're useful. And she saw an opportunity for them to be uh, help correct a material weakness that the external auditors identified by uh, doing monthly reconciliations. And apparently Ed has stepped forward to do that. So that's another task that apparently they're doing right now to help uh, respond to a critique from our external auditors. We could hire somebody else to do that too, but we've got residents who are willing to do that as elected officials. I see a hand up here and the hand's been up for a while. That's uh, Ellen Knadler. Your hand is up. It's Michael. Michael, your hand's up. I can't hear you. Are you on mute? Yeah, you're <laughs> muted. Michael Duane, you're muted. Muted. <laughs> Can you hear me now? Yes. Yes. Thank you. Okay. Thanks. Uh, We're calling on you. Uh, what's that? We're calling on you. Okay. Uh, two things. Uh, Seth, the uh, your farm is still standing. Thank God. Okay. Which one? The one in Florida. Uh, the one in here. Yeah. Oh, okay. Um, and I just want to just j just to comment about the discussion that's been in engaging about uh, town meeting and uh, the auditor and these positions and yeah. voting. Um, I j just for what it's worth, um, I just want to comment uh, or quote from the Vermont Supreme Court when they were discussing the uh, dissolution and of of all of our local of many of our local school districts, which is, don't it always seem to go that you don't know what you lost till it's gone. So I'll just leave it at that. And uh, thanks for the opportunity to comment. Thank you. So we're just talking about trying to put this on the town warning, uh, the auditor thing. I thought it was valuable to have all the 1200 voters that voted last year to weigh in on something. That I thought was democratic. That's my take on it. Um, and I didn't think the auditors did anything. Carl's correcting me on that. They do the town report and they do some internal work. I'm not sure what it is. I haven't seen them in the office much, but um, but I'm going by what other towns have done in the state around us is they have eliminated this position. They've done it. They have professionals to do the auditing and they don't have town auditors anymore. That's all I'm saying. And if we can have a forum about this, I think it'd be great. There's a hand raised. Oh, we have a hand raised here, Renee. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think I'm unmuted. So um, I want to appreciate what Judith and Carl have been saying, and also the policy that the select board had for last year, that nothing controversial would be discussed until people can be in person. And um, the last town meeting I attended in person, there were upwards of 250, almost 300 pe people there. And there were several very lively discussions and they reflected conversations that they'd been having for months on whatever their particular issues of concern were and had been. So while it might've been only 250 people, um, 
they all talk with their neighbors. And I think that process is really important. And um, I haven't been, uh, it's not been as easy for me personally to attend the town forums. Um, and somebody made reference to the fact that they're less well attended. I think it's great. I really appreciated what you said, Seth, early on in the meeting about um, having multiple forums to make it more inclusive because I think inclusivity is way up at the top of um, the values uh, towards empowering people towards democracy. And I mean, some people pay no attention to local governance, um, but I really think that local governance is at the foundation of the larger democracy that we are supposed to be reflecting as a nation. And um, the other thing that I want to say, which is really related, is that um, this pandemic is really taking the stuffing out of a lot of people. It was challenging last year, and last year you acknowledged that it would be wise not to put any controversial issues up for Australian ballot because you were acknowledging the challenges of the pandemic and the toll it was taking on the residents of East Montpelier and everybody else. And I wanna say that a year later, so two years into the pandemic, it's equally bad in different ways. It's really taking a toll. And so I, I think it would be really important and a, a value statement of our town to just, I mean, I don't see what the urgency is. If you might hire the current auditor anyways to do the same thing, I don't get why it would be an urgent thing because I personally feel it would be a very controversial issue. To me, you know, like the town of Hardwick is, I think I see it as being a lot larger and a lot more commercial than East Montpelier. And East Montpelier is its own unique town. And um, I think residents want to elect their neighbors to hold positions when they can be filled that way. So I don't see the urgency of putting a controversial issue up for Australian ballot when we're still in the thick of a pandemic and can't meet in person on the floor to have a conversation. So that's just, I have strong feelings about that. I have strong feelings about democracy and democratic process and empowering citizens to engage. We have a lot of volunteer committees that don't get voted on or whatever. And elections and town meeting are really the foundation of um, citizen engagement in our communities and within local governance. So I'm throwing my hat into that ring in a big way. And I, I hope that um, the select board can just wait uh, for the more controversial issues. So the, the only thing I can comment on Renee is I've never seen 300 people at town meeting and I don't think 250. As a matter of fact, the figures in the back of the town report are usually under 200. So that's the only thing that I was going on is that what's published and there was considerably less than 200. And that to me is, is nice to have town meeting, but I think that getting people to vote is important. And when you have 1200 people weighing on an issue, it's a lot better than just under 200. That's democracy in my book is having a lot of people vote and using the power of the vote. And when you have less than 200, making decisions for 2,500 voters, that doesn't seem right to me. So that's all. I'm not, I'm not gonna argue about any more on this issue. I don't think we have to make a decision tonight on these, um, on these items. Do we on the town warning, Bruce? Actually, what you're doing is setting up what's gonna be presented to you at the next meeting. Right, that's what I thought. So if you say you want this on, on the warning, it's going to be there, you can take it off. Right. <laughs> It'll show up not in yellow next time. Right. But we still have the power to take it off or on. Yes. Yes. Um, so it's the same with Article 9. Um, the same argument, same issue. Town listers. 
Um, we're probably going to have a reappraisal next year or two. Um, it's a tough job. Many people have, many towns have moved to professionals because of the complex world that we live in. The complex issues on assessments, et cetera, are becoming hard to do with local untrained people that get elected to a position that you have no power to oversee. So that's, a, that's an issue. Um, you know, I'm just presenting that issue. I, I guess I'd like to hear from our listeners as to whether what issues, whether they perceive them to be complicated or that they don't have the ability or experience expertise to handle the responsibilities of the lister of, of the lister position. I guess consistent with the auditor question, um, you know, these are as a select board, it seems like we're being asked to um, authorize removal of, of um, these elected positions. And if, you know, as Carla indicated, if there are people who are qualified and able and willing to fulfill these responsibilities within our community and having community members evaluating their, you know, their neighbor's properties, they live here, they know the area, um, and we acknowledge and honor their work and their effort, um, that furthers the democratic process more than eliminating the position. But I guess before we, I, I, I would want before we as a select board vote to include this or not include this as an item to, for voters to vote on removing this as an elected position, finding out from the listers whether they're overwhelmed, whether, they're, whether they feel that they can handle the duties as opposed to kind of a conclusions regarding that things are getting more complicated and they can't handle it and other, other towns are doing it. We're fortunate in this community, it sounds like that there are a lot of volunteers who want to perform these duties. And rather than um, acknowledge or um, expressly or implicitly um, deny them the opportunity to perform these duties by authorizing these items on the Australian ballot, I would opt to keep them and, and also bring in the listers and ask them, you know, is this something that you can handle going into the future? That's my thought. I, I, I just have <clears throat> just uh, a couple things. Um, the, the changes that, went, that occurred in Hardwick, okay? And Hardwick is quite a bit different. It's more commercial. We actually have our treasurer and our <clears throat> uh, payroll people are all, are all accountants. That's what we hire. Um, so they do the work. And we're, we were very comfortable with them being able to do the work. And then we, we contracted with external auditors. Um, as far as the listers were concerned, um, and as far as the auditors were concerned in Hardwick, there was no one who wanted to do the auditor's job. So there was not a big issue when we decided not to utilize auditors anymore. It came to the point where we could not find a third mm -hmm. um, lister to do the listing. No one wanted to do it. We had a couple of people who got, weren't qualified to came in and tried to do it. And it got too dangerous for us to continue in that manner uh, because damage can happen to your grand list and it never, and you can, never repair it if it happens in some cases. So in that case, the two listers said, look, we don't want to do this anymore. No one came forward who was qualified, who wanted to do the job. We even increased their pay and everything. And at that point, we said, we went out and we said, look, this is what we're going to do. We're going to hire an assessor. We turned around, we hired the assessor. We kept the auditors on for another, I mean, excuse me, the listers on for another year and a half to work with those people that we hired and nobody had an issue with it at all. The last thing I'm gonna say is that this year they decided to consider appointing the town clerk and, uh, and a town treasurer. And at that point, people did not agree with that. And it was gonna require a charter change, but we didn't go to town meeting with it because the meetings that we held before that had enough uh, had enough people attending who were against that move that they actually took it out of the charter change so that the whole charter wouldn't go down. So 
so the whole the whole thing that drove this in Hardwick was the fact that we could not find people to do the work. Um, and and I so I so I understand what everybody else is saying here that if we have people who actually want to do the work and are qualified to do the work, that's the really important part of it. Is then it's probably not necessarily a, a big problem having those people in those positions. It's where you don't have qualified people and you don't have people to do the work that it becomes an issue. So I mean, I didn't clarify this for this. I just want to let you know that's the way we did things there. We didn't just arbitrarily do it. So one of the things that Moss said last time, he said it takes five years to train someone to be a listener. <clears throat> I know that it's a complex job. Um, and I know that we're coming up for a reappraisal. So that's what I'm coming at. I see Renee's got her hand up. Yes, thank you. Um, so I'm not currently a lister, but um, when the last townwide reappraisal was coming around, um, the select board appointed me to work with the current listers at that time. And um, even though I had been untrained, um, I have common sense and maybe above average intelligence, maybe just average intelligence. I don't know how to judge it. But in any case, for the first however many months, um, I was supporting the listers in reorganizing the office and the files and setting up files for the state mandated um, contracted appraiser to come in. And as I did that, I learned other aspects of what it was. And I happen to have had a background, as I, I said this at a different meeting, I don't know if everyone who's here now was there also, but I'll say it again. Um, my background is, was in agriculture and particularly in the kind of um, land trust purchasing of development rights. And so even though we had a professional appraisal company coming in, because they do appraisals all over the state, they don't know our town the way residents of our town know the town. And they also don't have to answer personally to their neighbors. Um, so one of the things that um, I felt like I brought experience in that was not necessarily specific to listing, I mean, there's a lot of overlap of skills um, was understanding the value to the town of preserving our agricultural lands and also understanding the lost value to the property owner when they sell their development rights. And that's attached to the deed. And it really took me, I don't know how many months, at least six months, maybe more than that, to work with the contracted appraiser to help him to understand how he was thinking of value on those properties versus how we in the town think of them. And, um, and to me, that's very important. And um, it's not the same as current use in terms of taxes. And, you know, Ross is coming in now, I see him so he can speak for himself, but, um, it did. I was only a lister for four years. I, I was uh, appointed for my first year, elected for a three-year term. We got through the statewide appraisal. I learned as I went. There is a training system by the software companies, by Nemric, and by the um, the um, oh valuation state valuation. PVR. Oh, thank you. Yeah, I'm a little rusty. I haven't done, <laughs> done it for a while. I think our, I think our last reappraisal statewide uh, state mandated was uh, 2005, and this is 2022. Um, yeah, it it didn't. I was pretty well trained after three years, so didn't know everything. Didn't need to know everything because there's a head lister. But if people remember what happened when uh, Rosie suddenly passed away, I, I think it is important in our town to bring new listers on and then to look, I mean, we have so many people, new people in the last year and two and three years who've bought properties in East Montpelier. 
They want to get to know the community. I think this is a perfect opportunity to invite volunteers to come in and do the kind of tasks to support any um, position in town so that they learn how the town works. Because Vermont is one of the very last places left that still has a functioning citizen democracy and people need to learn how to do it. And so, I mean, that's how I feel. And so when we get down a little further about appointments and the list of vacancy, I've already thrown my hat back in the ring. I'd be glad to do that again. I know Deb Fillion threw her hat in the ring. I think someone else had thrown their hat in the ring. Um, so yeah, so I, I just to conclude, I want to appreciate uh, John Jewett reflecting on exactly why Hardwick had to privatize some of the positions that really are currently elected positions that reflect local governance. And we're not having that problem in our town. And so that's like, yeah, let's not try to fix something that's not broken. Thanks. Thank you, Renee. Um, so we're, we're kind of on schedule to get done with this discussion. Um, we can discuss at the next meeting. We're not finalizing anything tonight. We can talk about it some more. We can think about it. We can talk to citizens. Is that okay with everyone that we kind of stay on time here and get to the next item? Yeah. That's sure. about where we're at right now. Okay. So thank you for the hearty discussion. It's interesting. Um, and we'll see what happens at the next meeting. So, so the yeah, next thing yeah. on our... What's that? Before you move on. Yep. We're setting a warning. I need a default option here. Well, we haven't agreed one way or the other on this. And on these hey, two I'll have to sign it. So What's that? Change, hmm. It would be better for you to take a straw vote of your board members so that we okay. know the default position. Okay, so I, for one, would like to put these two items on the agenda just because we get a lot of people weighing in on it. And to me, that's the democratic way to make decisions to have as many voters decide as possible, not to select few that go to town meeting. So that's my position. I'd like to put it on the morning. So that's me. I think Judith and Carl are pretty clear. They don't want to put it on the morning. Is that correct, Judith and Carl? That's correct. John and Amy, we haven't heard from you. John, would you want to put it on the warning? Well, after that statement that I made, I would say probably I wouldn't want to put it on the warning until we have a chance to discuss it. Okay, so it sounds like, in a, so that's three people don't want to put in the warning. And then Amy, where were you on that? I'm kind of with John. I kind of switched my mind. There really isn't a hurry, so I'm okay. Okay, so it doesn't sound like we're going to put it on the warning, Bruce. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Okay, so going to the select board report. What are the I thoughts? As always, I need help. What do you want? <laughs> <on this? laughs> well, you always try to highlight what has happened in the town um, that we had some hand in. So. Have you come up with a list of positive changes? This is your report, not mine. <laughs> yeah, okay. So let's think, what did we do this past year that would be of interest to the town residents? Uh, well, coming up later on our agenda to discuss again, so it's uh, easy to think about the, uh, the mask mandate yeah. that yeah. we considered earlier in the year and after hearing feedback we decided to take no um no mandate action on but uh, you know, made some recommendations and then uh passed a mandate later in the year and we i we think got a bunch of our files electronically in, in the process of doing that so right a bunch of our land records and that all we actually did that last year and oh, we okay. hopefully we'll do it 
later this year. We have more files, though. We have more files to do. Yes. Okay. We allocated the money last year, but we're still in process of doing that. Yeah. We and and you know the other thing we kind of overlooked this, but um, every single year we support the library. We support the, um, the several agencies that help older citizens in town. Um, and a lot of these groups that come to us and ask for assistance, I think we put a lot of money and a lot of effort into supporting these agencies and nonprofits that make people's lives a little bit better in East Montpelier. And I don't think we talk about that enough. Mm -hmm. I know the older people really appreciate Twin Valley seniors. You know, it's a place where they can go and they can get a good meal. Meals come to their house, what, several days, you know, like four or five days a week. I, and I think that's something that we should just maybe let people know we're still doing that and we're going to continue to do that sort of thing. In, in fairness, what we do is we ask the townspeople to vote on that support, uh, but you know we, we queue it up for them to do that. Right, if yeah. we put it in our report then people are going to understand us that we're supporting it. Yeah, yep. The other thing is the mail-in ballots. I mean, that was pretty exciting for me is that we'd made that decision and we had so many people participate. We should mm -hmm. probably mention that in the Huge report. Huge voter turnout. And the elections went without a flaw, even with the COVID protocol. Yep. Yeah. So that should be mentioned in our report. And that we, we did everything by Australian ballot last year. I think voters should understand what choices yeah. we evaluated when we made that decision and mm -hmm. Uh, what we decided to do and why. Yeah. So what else is there of note? Thank the road crew. Yeah. And we got a new grader. I don't know where, why we didn't use it much, but we probably better not mention that. It wasn't last year that we got it though, so <laughs> we already put it in the report. Before. Oh, okay. Can we get a log grappler? <laughs> yeah, I, I think yeah, I guess the um, the ash committee, the sustainable roads committee, is going to get its own report. But um, but our log grappler is to help support their work in the road crew. The work. ash, and the ash it. removal. And we've yeah, yeah, definitely been supporting the EAB problem. Yeah, yeah. yeah. be here at the next meeting. Okay. And more, and more okay. we we probably could discuss the fact that we're going to have some opera expenditures coming up too sooner or later, and we need to talk with a lot of people about about what we plan to do or what we'd like to do with that money. I'm I'm sorry. What was the expenditure, John? ARPA, ARPA, ARPA money. Okay. Yep. We haven't yeah. really talked that much about it lately, but yeah. we we do have we will have to make some decisions on that eventually too. I think that's a great idea and, you know, inviting folk to provide their, you know, feedback and I maybe even, yeah. We got to narrow that though, because okay. there's very strict criteria with that money and we don't mm -hmm. want to be yep. inundated with a thousand applications for ARPA money. Yeah. I mean, maybe we can just reiterate, you know, the three factors or what, you know, very broadly what they are just to let folk know that we'll be evaluating that and, you know, deciding what to do with the money. So. Um, Should we mention CV fiber in this report? How it's coming East Montpelier and that we've been yes, supportive of that. That's great. I think, yes. I think so too. And I don't know if this is relevant, but would it make sense to just have a little bit of a blurb as to why we decided to keep the money for now in the capital reserve, the 13,000, because of, you know, anticipated paving costs going through the roof, et cetera, et cetera. I think that's more a topic for the town forum. Okay. It's so so minor. Uh, the bottom part of that report always has an explanation of oh, okay. that okay. kind of stuff. And so, okay. yeah, I'd probably be in there. So I think that pretty much covers it, unless somebody can think of something else. Sounds like, a, sounds like plenty. I don't want to choose the bullet points. Right. I want you to choose right. the bullet Okay. I mean, Bruce will be tasked with writing that up, and then we always go over it. Anything else pops out? Well, we, we spent something we spent some time on over the course of the year was the intermunicipal agreement with Callis and oh, the yeah. fire department. Uh, but where we ended up was so little different from where we started out. I'm not sure that that merits discussion in our town report. What do you guys think? I think the 
said, we did spend a lot of time on it. I don't know if you need to point out that nothing really happened from there. But. Well, it did kind of happen. I mean, yeah. they, they chose to put it on the floor yeah. and not bury it in the municipal budget. Yeah. Well, they haven't but, chosen that yet, but they have that. Yes, they did. No, yeah, they chose it. Warning has it. Oh, their warning has it? Okay. Yeah. okay. Yes. Yeah. yeah, they chose it. They said it tonight. Yeah, okay. Yeah. That is but a difference. Do we want to give our do we want to use our select board report to talk about what Callis is doing for our common fire department? I, I don't know. I, I don't think so. But no. <laughs> uh anything else? That's enough, isn't it? That's plenty. <laughs> and you know, we don't want to make it too long anyway. So that sounds good to me. If Bruce can craft something up and then we can look at it. We usually do before it gets included in the town report. That sound okay, Bruce? That you're gonna write it this year? Yes. You want me yes. to write it? Okay. I'll make sure you get it by the 24th. <laughs> yes. Yes, Ellen Knadler or Michael Dwayne. Can you hear me? There you go. Yeah. Hey, um, I was just thinking with the comments about the, uh, the intermunicipal agreement. Uh, uh, I, it might be worth mentioning, you know, it's been a topic and uh, it's come up and if Callis is doing uh, something different and there was a lot of back and forth, it might be just worth mentioning it in the select board report. Hopefully Callis puts in there in their report. Right. Not okay. everybody needs my pillar. Not everyone needs my pillar is going to read the Callis Town report, though. Okay. Yeah, but I'm just wondering why we're mentioning something that Callis is doing on their end. We didn't do that. It that East Mont. Yeah, I'm just putting it out there. It was something okay. that select board okay. spent a lot of time on. Yeah. It's a contract. It's a lot of money. People vote on it. Yeah. So. Uh, okay. We'll think about that. Anything else from anybody? All right. So we'll move to the next item H, discussion on recruitment of town treasurer candidates. Um, so we have a committee and don't we need to start advertising, Bruce? That's what this is about. We do we need to advertise. advertise. We have the job description from the last time. And I think we all agreed at, at the last time. What's that? There's a notice on, I don't know if you saw it, but there's a notice on the web post. Oh, good. But that's not the only ad that we're going to have out. Well, the question is, where do you want to put the ads? What yes. target date are you aiming for? That kind of stuff. Um, where, where would we put it if we don't, you, you said don't put it in the Times Argus? I didn't say don't put it in. Right, it's not really an appropriate place for town treasurer. Nobody right. No, I think seven days job listings a lot of people look at. People do look at those. It's really expensive though, isn't it? Seven days? It was last time. Mm -hmm. That was with the town clerk, yeah. Did you get any um, any buzz from the town clerk posting that was on there? Did you get a lot of applicants that responded from seven days? <laughs> we didn't give any yeah, yeah, no, I yeah. okay. Yes, John? I'd recommend you post it in the Vermont League of Cities and Towns newsletter. You could post it in the New Hampshire Cities and Towns newsletter. Um, and just because you'd get people, you know, from the Northeast Kingdom, probably you get some people from Central Vermont. Um, there's probably a couple of the other newsletters out there that I haven't thought of yet, but there's there's a bunch of municipal ones out there. And that's what we did when we were looking for a town manager. We and yeah. This is not quite the same, but it's still a pretty important position in town and be good to post it like that. Yes. And I don't see anything wrong with putting it in the Times Argus, but I don't think it gets it's seen. You could do Indeed, you know, online too with Indeed and things like that. The only thing I noticed with Indeed, you get a lot of crazy people applying too. Wow. <laughs> oh, yeah. And would it hurt to put it on Front Porch Forum or something like that in case someone local was? Yes. Front Porch Forum, for sure. Yeah. yeah. So I think we should advertise immediately. Okay. Or, yep. Now, the other question is, 
Is there any point in the committee meeting before we have applicants? You probably want to meet before you have applicants just to organize yourself. Get your questions together. Okay, so we should meet right away. I think yeah. we should meet. I was going to propose we meet on Monday the 17th, but um, who else is on that committee that's here? Uh, Rosie and Amy, you're on it, right? Yeah. There's Did three people. Count that as a holiday? Oh, it's oh, it's a holiday. Yeah. Oh. Well, um, we can meet on Tuesday, the 18th. Anybody want to do that? You're talking about this month, correct? Yeah. Okay. In a week, in 11, yeah. in, in eight days. Yeah, I could do the 17th or the 18th, that's fine. Well, I guess they, if it's a holiday, then you don't want to meet, but it doesn't yeah. matter. To, okay. that? We meet on Tuesday then, and that takes care of the holiday. Judith? Um, I just had a question just looking over the um, listing. So, Bruce, this is kind of borrowed from another listing that you had, or is this the product of the committee's work? The notice? Um, is, Judith, are you yes. asking that? Yes. 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 Um, I can't hear you. I'm sorry. I just created it myself. Okay, um, I would just recommend where it says and three references, maybe the names of three people who will serve as references. It's unusual for people to carry letters of reference and just so that it's clear um, that that's what you're looking for, if that is what you're looking for. And you can, you can always ask for references after you, you, you get, you narrow down your, your, your numbers to uh, maybe two or three people, and then you can ask for references at that point. You don't, you don't always have to ask for references right at the beginning of your, of your yeah. search. And, and, and just with a heck of it, you could, you could look at the Vermont League of Cities and Towns where they do advertisements for town officials all the time and look at some of their ads. I, I did the same thing and I, I learned a lot from reading their ads. Mm -hmm. um, and they'll also review some of your, they might review your ads for you and they would probably look at your questions as well, and I think that Judith should look at the questions too, the interview questions and stuff. When you guys okay. have them put together. All right. Um, so you wanna be able to ask the right questions and make sure that they're course. appropriate. And yeah, and, and you know, you likely want to have, you know, a set of questions that you ask every applicant. Right, same so Definitely. <laughs> yeah, we've done that before. Okay. Yeah, so the question is, do you want to meet on the 18th? Yeah, that's fine. At seven o'clock. Seven o'clock? No yeah, now the in-person option is there and there's Zoom capabilities also. Is that correct? It can be, yeah. yeah or, we gotta offer the Zoom option right now. We do. Who's gonna administer the Zoom? That's a good question. That's a good question. Is Rosie, um, does she do things like that in the office? Is she here? Well, is she still on the me. meeting? Yeah. Oh, hi, Rosie. Are you still on the meeting? <laughs> yeah, she's still here. Are you going to be in cat. person? Are you going to be in person, Rosie, to do the Zoom meeting? I can be if you need me to. I was going to come down to the town office, so there'd be two of us there. And I think that'll work. You mind doing that? No, I don't mind. You can set it up. Bruce can show me what needs to be done. Yeah, okay. So seven o'clock on the 18th, we'll have a meeting of the committee. Sound good? Sure. Sounds good to me. Okay, because I just want to get this going. We don't have a lot of time. We've got a lot of stuff to do. You're right. Okay. Right, okay. Um, so that takes care of H. Well, have, have we answered the question that Bruce asked about uh, is Monday, February 21st, the date that we want people to apply by? Oh, is that your question, Bruce? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yeah, or can we do it sooner than that? 
I think that it would take at least that long. Okay. Okay, so then we'll do it that way. Sounds mm -hmm. good. I'm for doing it as soon as possible. So set the date. The 21st is the soonest, and we'll set it for the 21st. Okay. I'm in favor. Okay. Sounds good. Um, let's see. The next item. Discussion on town management in light of COVID-19. Consideration extension of mask mandate. Sounds like we're probably going to have to in light of current figures. For whatever effect it has, we're not sure, but there isn't much we can do one way or the other. They did rip down the sign in the East Montpelier Home Center. And no one has a mask on, but <laughs> what can I say? <laughs> <laughs> it Dudley's there, some people have masks on, some don't. Um, in the bank, they're wearing the masks. Those are the three places I've been into. The most post people. office. They're wearing masks. masked up. They're pretty well masked up. The Fox off. Market were masked up. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The home center seems to be the least compliant. I probably shouldn't go to the home center to get my petition signed, huh? <laughs> 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 you never know. Many of the people there are not East Montpelier residents, however. No, I know. I'm just kidding. <laughs> yeah. In Dubby's, there's a few, though. <laughs> I don't know if I dare go in there either. <laughs> well, I remember you said you didn't want to get the petition out there and I told you I'd do it for you. It's all right. You're going to help me. I will. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, so there's no more discussion about mask mandate, et cetera. Doesn't look like it. I, I move to extend the mask mandate for, I, th I think we're only authorized to do it 30, day, 30 yeah. days at a time. So yeah, I, I would second that. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 The ayes appear to have it, they do have it. Um, the next item is appointments. We probably got to go in executive session for that. I move to enter executive session to discuss a personnel matter. Second. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 The ayes appear to have it, they do have it. So how does that work? We just all leave? All the people leave that are not part of the select board. And that's it. And then do you want us to come back? Or is that just it? You're going to deal with it all at another time? Um, it's hard to say. Um, I have a question. Do we have other items beyond this that changes in grand list due to current use updates? I don't see that on here. Uh, maybe I'm looking at, maybe I'm reading something wrong. <laughs> um, I didn't see warrants. And, I'm sorry, uh, I was reading, I apologize. I apologize. I was looking at the minutes. My, forgive me. Never okay. mind. Yeah, so there's nothing on, about current use. Okay, so um, we're going to go in executive session. So I see a few people on here still. We'll wait. Do, do, you, do you expect any action? I have no idea. Can I say? Well, is there, um, is, does the administrator know how to create a breakout room for the select board members so the rest of us can linger and be invited back after your meeting? Or actually put us in the breakout room. That may be the easier way to do it. Uh, yeah, I'm sorry. This is Judith again, if I'm, I'm yeah. muted. Which I am. There, I do see items beyond the town administrator report, the zoning administrator report, and warrants. Yes, warrants are on there. Yep. So I'm just wondering, perhaps we can cover those items before we cover the item for which we will be going into executive session, so members of the public can continue to participate. Okay. And don't have to go out. I, I, it's just an idea. Throwing that out there. Sure. Um, we don't usually have the public doing it, anything with warrants, but we can. Um, so let's see, there's warrants left and there's other business, which is the Humane Society. Those are two things that are left. But we can do them if you'd like. Um, so the first thing are the warrants. So 
We're not in executive session. We're going to do the warrants so the public can participate. Um, Come out and, of executive session. We don't, need, we don't need a motion to do so. <laughs> okay, so um, we'll have to appoint someone to sign the warrants. Um, Carl's there. Amy's there. Okay. So I can make a motion that we uh, that we appoint Carl Carl to sign the uh, the January 10 to yeah uh, 2022 warrant. Yep. We have a second. Okay, Julius seconded it, and that would be all those in favor of is Carl. I didn't quite hear all that. Um, signing the warrants, the 2022 January 10th warrants. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 The ayes have it. Okay, so that takes care of the warrants. I mean, everyone, of course, can look them over. And the other thing is the addition to the agenda, which was the Humane Society. Um, I'm just looking for that item. <clears throat> What, oh, it's on your memo, right, Bruce? Where is that? I'm not seeing it, but I've got it somewhere here. Oh, oh yeah. it's at the Zoning bottom of the memo. It's the Zoning Administrator Report. Zoning Application Fee Waiver for Central Vermont Humane Society. Mm -hmm. um, so that is the putting a new shed next to the parking area. Um, so the application requires a DRP here in the standard fee is 320. The town has since Central Vermont Humane Society moved to town, waived zoning fees given that the town's not charged. I think that's a good idea because they do not charge us for their services. So um, the last such waiver was 2015 for the parking lot expansion. I really would urge, strongly urge the uh, select board to grant them a waiver so they don't have to pay for the application. Standard fee is 320. They do all the work they do for us for free. I think we should respond in kind. Yes, John? I make a motion that we uh, offer a way or implement a waiver to the Central Vermont Humane Society um, for a permit for a new shed structure. We have a second. Second. We have a second for maybe. All those in okay. favor, please say aye. Discussion is in order at this point. Um, as animal control officer, I have an ongoing relationship with the Central Vermont Humane Society, and I'm happy to, uh, to talk if you want about the services that they provide for us. Uh, however, as I'm animal control officer, then I think that's a type of conflict of interest in this case, and I, I will recuse myself. Okay. I, I, I support this, but I will recuse myself. Carl, yes. Carl, could you just briefly describe the service that they provide for us? Sure. Uh, so the, the chief service that they provide for us is that um, when we find a dog or a cat whose owner is unknown and uh, we decide that, okay, the, the owner is probably not going to show up, then we can take the, the animal to the Humane Society and put it in their system for adoption. And we have um, both, both I and the second animal control officer have a, a number to use, a code number to use so we can get in there in the middle of the night if we need to and uh, place an animal into their care. So that's very, very comforting to know that we have that, um, that ability. In addition, uh, we, we talk to them about uh, how to handle certain animal control officer issues. If a goat shows up in somebody's driveway and they're afraid that the goat is gonna jump up on somebody's car, on their car, and cause damage to it. So they want to reunite the goat with their owner. What do I do? I call Erica Holton, the operations director at the Humane Society. That's more in her capacity as, um, as an animal control officer in other towns, uh, but she's at the Humane Society. It's, it's really a fuzzy line there. Great, thank you. Sure. So we have a motion before us. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 The eyes appear to have it. They do. And Carl abstained.
So there's four, four eyes and one abstention. Um, so I think that takes care of the items that we have on our agenda. Um, was I'm sorry, was Bruce going to talk about the town administrator report? Or did I miss that? <laughs> we haven't gotten to that. Um, we could. I'm looking at it right now. Yep. We've got the appointments. We've got the town management. We did that, the warrants. So Bruce could give us the ARPA updates and the Washington County stuff in the meeting schedule, if you want. So the ARPA update is very simple. The rules are now out. The rules read like... Um, I cannot hear you, Bruce. I'm sorry. I can't hear you. It's not our microphone. Hang on. Yeah, I... It's I, I can hear you, uh, Carl, and excuse me. Um, yeah, Carl and Amy, I can't hear you. <laughs> Thank okay. you. Can you hear now? Yep. Okay. So the ARPA rules were released. Uh, they read like Code of Federal Regulation rules. So they're dense and BLCT has the paid staff to to uh, interpret them for us. That's what they're in the process of doing. And they have asked that people hang out, wait until they release their guidance before moving forward, because apparently there were a number of changes in the final rules over the interim rules. But bottom line, nothing about the dates has changed. So you still have plenty of time to, to run a reasonable process to get public input. We'll have more to go soon. And did the uh, Vermont League of City and Towns indicate when they'd be providing a guidance? These just came out last Thursday evening. And so when BLCT put out their notice, they basically said, give us a few days to read the things. Uh, so no, they didn't give us a date. Okay, thank you. And then the Washington County. Yeah. the the uh, budget meeting that they always hold that from what I can see, nobody ever goes to uh, is in theory going to rubber stamp the budget that they sent out last month. And we got a call from Bev Hill, the, the treasurer, the county treasurer to give the estimated levels. That's what got put in the, the uh, budget for tonight and she does not expect any changes. So that's for better or for worse, that's what we're all going with, not just East Montpelier. Uh, meeting schedule, we got another special meeting on the 24th. That will be the budget and, and a warning sign off night. And that's about it. The special forums, unless you choose to do it an extra meeting will there'll just be two this year one on the 14th one on the 28th we could do a special one if we wanted in between those two dates but you could but it's a holiday again oh that's right so this isn't done on the uh, select board memo uh, Bruce, for the 14th but um, are you thinking there'd be a, a town forum on the 14th as well? What time? Well, the way we did it last year, we just advertised it as part of the meeting. Yeah. Right. Uh, we put it on front porch forum and stuff like that, but it was nothing special. Right. Whereas the February 28th one is one where we're obligated to do some special things like start it at the time that we say we're going to start it. <laughs> yeah, stuff like that. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. That's all okay. I had. What's that? I said that was all I had. Okay. So it looks like we're done with everything we possibly could be done with uh, before we go in executive session. Great. Thank you. Yeah. No problem. So now we need to have the motion. Go in executive session for a personnel matter. I'll make that motion again. I'll second it again. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Okay. And so will there be.